I played Genshin Impact some time ago, all the way until World Level 3, and I remember having fun times with the game. But one thing really stood out to me, and that is the wonderful music of Yupeng Chen. And that is what we're gonna focus on in this new series of music reactions. And at the end of the video, you will also hear my own rendition of the Genshin Impact theme as a tribute to this experience. Let's go! immediately gives you this magical feeling of flying, of floating. The flute and the harp is a magical combination, very common in medieval fantasy music like Lord of the Rings. The combination is just a tried and true perfect combination for this kind of magical sounding music. And this style of flute playing with lots of ornaments, those that is very much based on Irish folk music with a tin whistle, with a penny whistle. And if you listen to a lot of this traditional Irish music, it's just very much in that vibe of medieval fantasy, very Hobbit-like, very Lord of the Rings. Oh my God, that feeling, that feeling of that reveal. It's pretty much you are alone in a forest, but you see the light at the end of the forest. You exit the forest only to be greeted by this wonderful vista, a magical castle, a meadow, a valley full of splendor and all that greenery right in front of you. Beautiful reveal. and we are back to that intimate sound. It's a contrast of an intimate combination, just flute and harp, and then sudden grand epic sound with a full orchestra coming in, and we're back to the smaller sound. So it's a contrast of something personal, something grand, huge scope, and then back to that personal touch. Beautiful. I always love that main theme. This sounds very medieval, renaissance. It's not gonna be out of place if you play this in a king's court. You know those medieval or baroque dances where they switch partners like a masquerade ball in a medieval royal court because of that elegant waltz? Love that subtle choir in the background. And one more thing that makes it sound medieval renaissance is the use of modal scale, which is a very specific type of scale that is mostly associated with these kinds of folk medieval renaissance music.
absolutely beautiful. That is probably one of my favorite pieces that I remember while I was playing the game. And I do remember doing some daily quests here and I would just hang around the location for a while because I wanted to listen to the music. I'm sure a lot of you also do that where you stop by a location in a game just because the music is beautiful. I still do that. This next one is called A Sweet Smile. This theme, this mood, screams very much like the playfulness of Paimon or the childlike wonder with Amber or, you know, the playfulness of the game. The game itself, the story, the graphics, and the music, it's all very lighthearted fun. And I know it can get some serious drama at some point, but most of the time, just like the main theme's mood, the entire vibe of the game always makes me feel like it's just lighthearted fun and you're just doing quests, you're just traipsing along the meadows. This music right here, A Sweet Smile, is giving me that overall lighthearted vibe. Wow, I love that. The combination of a staccato type of syllable. Ta, 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 ta with staccatos and pizzicato, just a combination of that with the vocals and the string. It's so simple, yet it sounds so rich to the ears. Yeah, that was a simple but beautiful light motif. I can expect to hear that more often, probably in the other sections of the music. And this one is called A Storm, A Spire, and A Sanctum, also known as Divalin's Nest. We're getting a bit more into something more melodramatic serious here. The flute is playing some of its lowest notes, but when used in the lower ranges, it sounds dark and atmospheric, just like this. Oh my God, combination of clarinet and low range flute. You can't go even more melancholic and somber with woodwinds just like that. That is the perfect entrance of the strings. With the flute and clarinet doing the melody, you've kind of already exhausted like one loop. You've introduced the melody. You've done the right amount of repetition, which is usually in even number of bars, like four bars or eight bars or 16 bars. And then you introduce those long sounding strings. It suddenly feels like a new section has been introduced, a new perspective and thus, refreshing the peace in your ears. Wow, that entrance of the vocal sounding so lullaby-like is just so haunting.
new section. Wow, this new rhythmic pattern of do, 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 and then the long tone with the strings. This very much reminds me of Eric Satie's Gymnopedy, where there's like a very subtle rhythmic pattern. Very subtle, not very over the top. The melody is just like long tones. So it is more of an atmospheric vibe with the melody, but it is kind of stretched. Whoa, that modulation, damn, with the quartal flute chords. Quartal chords are some of the most spicy combination. Oh my god. Yu Peng Chen or whoever is the sound engineer. The piano reverb is so perfect. I remember always enjoying the reverbs of the piano in the pieces in the Mondstadt area. The reverb is just the right amount. Just the right amount to make it sound both vast and intimate at the same time. Beautiful. And that is obviously a high quality grand piano. Not only is that a high quality grand piano, but I'm definitely sure it's a combination of both a skilled performer and a really good piano because of that control. That control with the lighter tones. You can't do that as much in a regular upright piano, for example. Wow. Instead of using a piano though, I used my classical nylon guitar as the harmonic component of my own main theme arrangement. It always gives off this cozy and comfortable feeling. This is called Celestinum Finale Termini, which I believe is one of the boss battle themes. We're entering into complex meter territory here. And when I say complex meter, it's not just the usual 4-4 four, four or 2-4. Four. I'm hearing 4-4 four, four combined with 5-4 and 7-4 right here. Oh wow, he is using Vivaldi style modulations, Vivaldi style chord progressions. I'm hearing a little bit of winter here. Wow, yes, this is so classical sounding and I love it. There it is. You see that? Only now did percussion enter with that subtle snare drum in the background with a very skilled composer like Yu Peng Chen. There is so much you can do to create tension, like the way it started. Listen to this. Just a play on dynamics of the lower bowed strings. 
just the low notes using complex meter and just one solid unison of bowed strings, there's already tension. It's a battle theme. There's looming danger. And this cluster of violins and violas here are just thickening that tension by employing a similar style of bowing, similar style of rhythmic staccatos. Yeah, it's channeling Vivaldi, I tell you. Woo! That sequence right there, Vivaldi, Bach, yeah, it's very Baroque. That chordal transition right there, it's what they specifically call in the Baroque era as a sequence, where you deliberately lead the piece into a different key as a transition to another key and sometimes it goes on and on Bach loves to do that but sometimes one is enough two is enough but if you're super playful or kind of a troll like Bach he likes to mislead the listeners into thinking oh it's going to this key no it's going to this key no 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 oh okay it's going oh finally that's the key so <laughs> Bach loves to do that And here we go. Here is the emotional impact. Genshin impact? What? Yes, adding in the woodwind section, playing a bit of an emotional melody, it kind of gives the piece this emotional gravitas. going to an inversion, going down an inversion. That's such a thing that happens mostly in Baroque music, such as like Toccata in Fugue in D minor by Bach. As if he couldn't lift the emotional impact even more. Oh my god, that entrance of the vocals? Damn, absolute goosebumps. Wow, they're in stereo. And now we're into Mozart territory. This is, oh my God, Yu Peng Chen is absolutely very much a skilled composer trained classically. Because these melodies, these chord progressions, now they are channeling a little bit of Requiem and a little bit of Queen of the Night by Mozart. Transferring the melody from haunting vocals now to flute, woodwind section. That is so delicious. I don't know if you noticed, but we don't have any percussion right now. The entrance of the snare, the entrance of a little bit of the timpani in the background, now they're gone again. But the tension is still there because of the constant hard staccatos by the string section. Amazing. The rhythmic weight is being carried by the string section and the emotional weight is being done by the woodwinds and earlier the vocals.
And now we have the percussion again, just a tiny sound of tambourine, I believe. But oh my God. Okay, so this is the reason why I am so obsessing over this, why I'm so nerding out over the minimal presence of percussion. Because most of the time, in RPGs especially, the traditional trope being used by composers, and this is not like a diss to any particular composer, this is just like a trope that has become tradition that I'm starting to get not sick of, but I'm always trying to look for something a bit more fresh. But what I'm referring to is this over-reliance on heavy drums or heavy percussion instruments to create tension, to create heavy rhythmic tension. I mean, that's fine and good, especially in metal, but it's not all the time that a composer like Yu Peng Chen purposefully avoids or just lessens the use of percussion instruments and instead lets the melodic instruments, the traditionally melodic instruments like the strings and the woodwinds to still carry that rhythmic impact, but still create like this tension, this gripping tension that captivates the listener. See, see what I mean? That entire epic section right there. It's so full of emotion, so much gravitas. And if it would have been in a more traditional RPG trope, probably a drum section would come in or even more percussion like taikos and all that. And that's all quite fun as well because I also write like that sometimes. But man oh man, the restraint is respectable. That ending, that is like the only obvious use of percussion. That's like a concert bass, timpani combination or something like that. But all throughout the piece, there is minimal percussion presence. And he's pretty much employing the school of Beethoven or the school of Mozart or Tchaikovsky. Not much of Stravinsky because Stravinsky is very much a percussion enjoyer. But going back to Beethoven, for example, Beethoven's fifth. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Just four notes immediately. Such heavy drama, such heavy tension. No percussion, no percussion. Probably some timpani in the middle, like timpani accents. But again, this goes way, way back to the school of classical music writing where all the tension and drama and the emotional impact is being done by the traditionally melodic instruments. String section, woodwind section, brass section. Yeah, and so far, I have not even heard those Hollywood sounding brass sections being abused right here. It's mostly a play between a string orchestra and a woodwind section with minimal percussion and almost very minimal brass presence. They might be there in the background, but as an accent. So I like the aesthetic that Yu Peng Chen is going for here. By the way, I heard you love video game music. I arrange and produce an album series called Video Game Music Box. These are music box arrangements of your favorite game soundtracks from Zelda to Mario. They're essentially lullabies for gamers. And I just dropped a new album Genshin Impact Volume 1 for your enjoyment. Links in the description. Lone Sojourner. Solo classical guitar. Let's go. Oh my god. Classical nylon guitar sound is so rich. It is my favorite kind of guitar sound ever. Spicy jazz chords. Wow, I love that. It does sound kind of like a high-end MIDI classical guitar, but it doesn't matter. It's still a beautiful composition.
Damn. This vibe right here, very Francisco Tarrega versus very Isaac Albanese, those classical guitar gods in classical guitar composition. There's hints of flamenco. There's hints of jazz. There's hints of bossa nova. It's all a great combination of that. And Yu Ping Chen really captured that vibe right here. Beautiful. Ah, this is one of the pieces that I've been waiting for. I love, love the themes of Mondstadt. We're back to the playfulness and back to the Celtic style flute playing. Yes, it's a beautiful day in the city. Let's go hop around. Beautiful. I love that Yu Peng Chen can simply go from serious, dramatic, classical to traditional folk, Irish sounding, Celtic inspired uh, music. It's just a great display of versatility and composition and musical knowledge, really. And one of the best ways to become versatile in compositional style is just listen. Listen to a lot of music. Listen to all the music, every genre. There's always a good side and probably a bad side of any musical genre. Try to listen to the good ones in every music genre and there's always something to learn. This is such a well-written motif. It fits with any vibe, whether it's fast, danceable, or mellow. Like in this case, a semi-choir with like a lower range string bed. It sounds so ethereal, so magical. And you know, when I first heard it, I always thought, oh, it reminds me of Zelda's Lullaby. Kind of makes sense from an aesthetic perspective because I've heard a lot of critiques or comparisons with Genshin Impact and Breath of the Wild in a kind of similar vibe art style, music style, gameplay wise, and I know there's like major differences with each, but there's also major similarities with, with each. And I kind of get what they're trying to go here. I kind of get what Yu Peng Chen was trying to evoke here, like acknowledging the musical inspirations. Beautiful. that range. Beautiful, very dreamlike indeed. And even though I wish I could sing that well, I am still a violinist through and through. So it's only natural for me to choose my violin as the lead instrument for my own arrangement. This is called Pure Sky.
there it is again. The beautiful piano reverb. Obviously, great piano playing and definitely high quality piano. But man, the reverb. The reverb is what makes the piece. That right amount of reverb to make it sound vast and intimate at the same time. Wow. Oh, this is like the pedal tone chord progression of the main melody, of the main theme. Kind of evoking that vibe, kind of like probably a B-side of the main theme. But yeah, still beautiful. Diminished chord hype. Diminished chord as modulation. One of the most effective uses of diminished chords. Yeah, that sweet, dreamy, melancholic vibe. Kind of reminds me of Joe Hisaishi, to be honest. His work with uh, Studio Ghibli movies. Yeah, it's giving me that same vibe of uh, dreamlike innocence. Yes. The Edge of the Prairie. Interesting title. Violin! Violin! What the hell? Now this sounds like Franz Schubert or Fritz Kreisler violin solo composition. Damn it. How can Yu Peng Chen be this good in evoking all the styles in classical music especially? That is amazing. I love that switch to kind of Romanian style of melodic minor. Wow. This is very traditional folk European like Czechoslovakian or Romanian. Oh, wow. I can even hear the violinist breathing and this... <sighs> This totally maximizing the G strings low crisp growl. I love it. So far, I recognize that most of the pieces are mostly one minute, one minute short pieces. And I do know, and I recognize that the function of this is because Mihoyo, the developer, I believe they didn't want the music to be like a looping style of music, like in the olden days of Nintendo games where the music is like continuous. I think they wanted it more to be a cross between Skyrim and Breath of the Wild. In Skyrim, it's more like a playlist of ambient music. It's non-stop by default, unless you change the settings, of course. In Breath of the Wild, the music is a bit more contextual. It only plays when you do certain things, but most of the time it's just ambient noise. And from what I remember, Genshin Impact is also kind of like that. There's moments of silence in terms of music, but you will hear a lot of ambient noise by default, of course. So the music will just come in and go, but not overstay as well. A Tale of Two Dragons. Another beautiful rearrangement of the main theme. This time, piano solo with fuller harmonies. A little bit jazzy, I like it. What? 
sudden theme change, harp, and then a new modulation, new harmony, what? Yeah, that caught me off guard. This is like two themes, like a mashup, almost like a mashup. Like, it's like started with the one you're familiar with, the main theme. And then suddenly new theme, different textures, and it's like more like a roller coaster, especially with those harp arpeggios. Kind of like the motion of a dragon in flight, maybe? Eh, eh, eh? Ominous. Whoa! That is... That is the first obvious and boisterous use of a brass section, like how it's traditionally used in an orchestra to evoke sort of jump scare, to jump scare you, pretty much. I'm exaggerating, of course, but most of the time, especially in classical music, the function of a brass section is kind of to jump scare you, not literally, of course, but to add this super obvious boisterous accent to kind of catch you off guard. Wow, this fanfare is like trying to surprise you. And now we're delving into Rite of Spring, Stravinsky territory. Oh my God! That is very much a Stravinskyan use of brass. Kind of 12 tone, 8 tonal music? What? Yeah, this is everything. Oh my God, Yu Ping Chen is just flexing now. Yeah, I know all the styles. I know all. All. Yeah, 12 tone atonal music or serialism like Arnold Schoenberg, Olivier Mizian. These are the kinds of music that you would hear being featured in classical concerts that feature the so called avant garde compositions or modern classical music, where it sounds like super weird. You can't sing along to it, you can't dance along to it, and it's purposely meant to boggle your mind. And I know this and I can roast it because this is what. I studied in college. My university just wanted all composition majors to compose this style of music only. Tonal music is banned. Yeah, that was all kinds of emotions, starting magical, innocent and then suddenly transforming into melancholic, and then suddenly serious, melodramatic, horror, mysterious. It is everything. This is everything. This definitely is most likely a film score or a music score to accompany a fixed cutscene. Because compared to most of the other music that we listen to, they pretty much stay in one vibe. If, it, if it's playful and magical, it stays playful and magical. If it's dreamy and ethereal, it stays pretty much dreamy and ethereal. I think that's mostly what I would characterize most of video game music when used as background music. For a location, for a town, for a world, or a shop, they stay pretty much in one theme. But this one, A Tale of Two Dragons, very definitely feels like a film score where it needs to match the exact animation, the exact dialogue, or the exact scenery that is happening, so it always has to change the mood. That is the one of the biggest differences between film music and video game music. Of course, this is still technically video game music as it is accompanying a cutscene happening within a video game, but the practice of the music changing its mood to match the scenery, that is pretty much an age-old tradition in film. Mm -hmm.
And to add some of that cozy countryside vibe, I decided to harmonize with some melodica lines. I always imagined the Genshin characters jamming some music in a campfire somewhere in between their adventures. Rite of Battle Oh yes, I remember this music playing when you're fighting those hilly churls. Wow, again, Yu Peng Chen. Total restraint, battle theme, all the tension brought on by the staccato syncopation by melodic instruments. No percussions in sight, at least not yet. Yeah, definitely now in Stravinsky territory. Kind of reminds me of several pieces from Stravinsky. Semblances of the soldier's tale with those syncopated patterns and those use of pentatonic sounding harps and strings. There's a little bit of Petrush and Firebird from all from Stravinsky. This type of music right here, I would call it neoclassical because or that's how music theorists or musicologists usually categorize or classify Stravinsky's music. So we're gonna call it neoclassical just for uniformity's sake. But most of the time with music like this, they are trying to rebel against the traditional notion of having one key or one tonal center or only having major and minor chords in pieces in the same way how how Vivaldi or Bach or Beethoven use still center their music, their compositions on this traditional notion of triadic harmony, where we have C major, G major, F, and then back to C, or one, four, five, or one, five, four, one. The tonal harmony. That's the tonal traditional music, which you also hear in pop music, even today. It's something that we're all used to, this notion of conventional harmony. But the purpose of composers like Stravinsky, the music like the eight tonal, the 12 tone, the serialism, and all those kinds of modern classical avant-garde, the purpose of those compositions is kind of like a rebellion against the traditional notion of melody. In fact, they deliberately write music Music with no distinct melody, with no danceable rhythmic pattern. They just want to troll you and probably make you think, make you feel uneasy, and you feel all these other emotions that are not usually explored when listening to the more traditional music, which is usually the one what we call pleasing to the ears. So they mean to bamboozle the listener. And this style right here, that this rite of battle that Yu Peng Chen is employing, is definitely in that bamboo boozling style. <laughs> That sounds like the planets, Jupiter, the planets from Gustav Holst.
Now we're back to a bit more traditional sounding. This kind of evokes traditional JRPG harmony, kind of like Chrono Cross by Yasunori Mitsuda. Something that you can follow along to, dance along to, vibe along to, and most likely sing along to. Okay, this, this is why I do these reaction videos. A lot of you always keep telling me, play the game so you'll understand the music. Wrong. If you rely on listening to music by playing the game, especially with something of a masterpiece like this, you sometimes finish the battle too quickly, the music will just stop playing and you won't hear the rest of the music. I don't remember hearing this part of the music here because most of the time when I will battle these hilly churls, they're defeated so fast that the music doesn't even play for like 30 seconds. And so it doesn't always fit your narrative of playing the game to appreciate the music. That is just one-sided. just thought of an analogy. This is beautiful. This juxtaposition between the atonal sounding and then something that is traditionally tonal. This is kind of like polishing a diamond. On one hand, you have a diamond in the rough, represented by the atonal structure, the atonal music, rugged, rough, lots of irregular texture. And then you polish the diamond. It's now uniform, beautiful, shiny, kind of like this, atonal and tonal. And now, this is the only time we're hearing more percussion. I heard a snare drum roll earlier, and now we're hearing a bit of concert bass, some timpani, and then, bang, tubular bell. Yes, lots of snare drum action happening here. Yes, the snare drum. That's one of the longest sections with the snare drum so far. But again, the snare drum is just doubling or just copying the rhythmic pattern of the melodic instrument. So it is, it is more like a support rhythm than the main rhythm. absolute masterpiece. Knighthood Excellence. <laughs> Knighthood Excellence indeed. The rhythm of that pizzicato string, dun, da, 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 dun, dun, da, 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 dun. that is pretty much a march usually done with a snare drum. Ta, 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 ta. A kind of anthemic, heroic, kind of ceremonial, like knights at the parade or knights being knighted. Very ceremonial, very royal, anthemic sounding even. What? Nice! Nice! 
now it's a full on march. Concert bass and snare drum, let's go! Oh wow, a grand epic march, maybe to celebrate something, to celebrate a victory. And then you remove the snare drum, you put this emotional section right here, maybe closing up to each character, smiling and jumping close up to the camera. This is like the emotional segment of that section. I suspect this is another cutscene where there's dialogue happening. I might be wrong, but you can tell me in the comments. John Williams is Superman. <laughs> Sudden modulation. Love it. Yes, that rhythm tan ta 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 tan 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 ta 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 tan tan that is very much a march, a military march, a graduation march, something ceremonial. Yes. Light motif insert, let's go. Yeah, the Mondstadt theme, also the sped up main theme. That is beautiful. That is fun. And finally, it was time to put my own arrangement together. I really went for that acoustic campfire jam aesthetic. I like this atmosphere as if you're playing music together with a couple of friends. Stay tuned until the end of the video to hear the full version. This is called Happy Journey. Pizzicato strings are so fun. They're always by default fun, happy, funny, and, and depends on the range. I always think of clucking chickens. Look, look. This harmonic sequence right here, it sounds kind of classic Sims 1 shopping music. <laughs> There we go. That was a good example of harmonic sequence. A harmonic sequence is like a repeating harmonic step with different levels. It kind of like a staircase leading to another level, which is another key or another modulation. Oh my god. Yu Peng Chen is such a master of tasteful syncopation. It sounds like that he is using complex meter here because of those very unpredictable syncopations between sections between the pizzicatos and the glockenspiel. But it's just actually 4-4. Four, four. But he makes it sound so playful, so unpredictable. Sounds like a 1950s sitcom, but yeah, oh my god, yeah. He is a master of the unpredictable syncopation, and that mastery of tasteful syncopation is kind of what affords him to be able to build these rhythmic sections that evoke the tension and evoke the power of the piece without relying too much on heavy percussion.
modulation again. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen to that. Oboe and pizzicato strings. They sound like a chicken. I always just associate pizzicato strings with chicken sounds. Oh, there. Percussion. Tambourine. But again, super minimal. That was one happy journey indeed. That was fun all throughout and jolly. <laughs> I think this is the last one for this particular album. So we listen to the entire album so far. And depends on the reception on this video, I might continue the trend of listening to one album per episode because there is just so much music from Genshin Impact and I want to hear all of them because Yu Peng Chen is, I would say, the breakthrough video game composer of the 2020s. Oh wow. I love that it still uses the light motif of the main theme, but it kind of sounded like it started in the middle of a piece. Like you interrupted it in the middle of the piece, you abruptly entered like that. Sounded a bit like Pirates of the Caribbean. It sounds like somebody being confident, exclaiming their intention to go on an adventure. And now we're reminiscing happy memories, cherished memories. That <laughs> contrast of grand militaristic to something mellow and soft. Modulation again. The emotional stakes are heavy on this one. Wow, this is serious. It's like they're heading out on a grand epic adventure, but it's also an important mission that they're out to defeat this dragon or something. We're gonna save the kingdom. And this is it. This is the final battle of this DLC. Wow. I don't think I will ever get sick of that leitmotif. It's just such a beautiful written leitmotif that can fit any style, like I said earlier. And the fact that it is generously sprinkled all throughout the soundtrack, at least for this first album, is just marvelous. It can easily fit. But yes, that was a beautiful first album entry. The Wind and the Star Traveler, the first official soundtrack from the game. The first of many. I So far, as of this recording, there's now 20 official albums and they're not yet done. So much music. And I've only 
heard and listened to maybe three of the albums because I've only played up to a certain extent in the game. I have a lot of new music that I want to discover and I hope that we can discover it together. And that was my first video on Genshin Impact music. If you want me to react to more Genshin Impact soundtracks, let me know in the comments. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss out. Until then, I'll see you on the next video. Now click right here for more interesting discussions about video game music.